In this video I am going to show you how I installed the NAT hydraulic brakes on an electric scooter. In my case I did it on the VDM10 from Titan. It's also known as the Apollo Ghost or Tech Life X8 in Europe. So the scooter originally had zoom brakes but they were leaking oil. So I decided to buy the NAT hydraulic brakes and swap them out. So this will be a short overview of changing the brakes. The process should be similar for other electric scooters as well. Specifically on the VDM10 I did not have to do any modifications to the caliper mounting brackets. They just were an in-place replacement for the zoom brakes. And it should probably be the same if you are swapping from mechanical brakes on the VDM10 to hydraulic brakes. So to start uh, we first need to remove all the cable binding material and free all the cables so that we can take off the brakes. First we will remove the zip ties and the plastic wrap and underneath the plastic wrap is a sort of a fabric tape that's protecting the wires further. When taking off the tape it's uh, better to put on some gloves uh, because it's really sticky and kind of disgusting. And after you remove the tape uh, you will also need to clean the wires if you don't want them to be all sticky. So for me the easiest way to clean the sticky residue from the wires was to use a bit of olive oil that removes the stickiness from it and then use a bit of isopropyl alcohol to remove the oil residue and the cables will be clean. Okay, once you clean off the wires the next step should be to drain the oil from the existing brakes if you are replacing hydraulic brakes. If you are replacing mechanical brakes then obviously you don't need to do this step. The easiest way to drain the hydraulic brakes is to remove the bottom screw and then uh, have someone help you and hold the caliper over some uh, oil absorbing material and uh, once the top screw is loosened the oil should drain out of the system. Uh, this way you avoid the mess later on when you will be removing the oil lines from the scooter. You can also press the brake lever several times to help speed up the oil removal. Okay, once you have drained the oil then you can uh, take off few remaining zip ties and here you will take off the protective plastic to get to the nut that is holding the oil line inside the brake lever and you will loosen this nut and that will allow you to remove the oil hose from the brake lever. It can take some first to remove the line because it's uh, still stuck in place with the metal o-ring that was crushed inside. So just wiggle it a bit and then you should be able to remove the oil line. Then to make the removal easier it's uh, best to cut off the top and that way when you are pulling the line through the stem of the scooter you won't have any hang-ups on the other wires. Now you also need to remove the nut and the protective plastic cover. And uh, before you pull through the old oil line or brake line, if you are replacing mechanical brakes, make sure you tie some string to the end of the line before you pull it through the scooter stem. Otherwise you will have a really hard time pulling the new line back up the stem. Once you have the string secured, make sure the string is long enough, especially when you are changing the back brake. So the string goes all the way through the stem and then also through the deck of the scooter so you don't have to disassemble anything when you are putting in the new line. Also make sure the string is well secured to the oil line and it doesn't come off when you are pulling it through the stem.
if it gets stuck a bit on the other wires, just uh, wiggle it around a bit and it should come through the stem. In some places, especially if you are pulling the back brake line through the deck, the, some of the plastic openings might be a bit too tight. So just try to carefully push the line through together with the string so the string doesn't come off. On the VDM10, uh, it should fit as you will see in this video. If you are doing this process on a different scooter, it all depends on how the line goes through the deck. You might be required to remove some parts of the scooter to get it through. As you can see here with the back plastic piece it was stuck a little bit but it came through and uh, putting the st string through the stem and the deck of the scooter will make it a lot easier to put the new line back up the stem and deck. To cut the new brake line to the correct size the easiest way is to compare it to the old line you just removed from the scooter and if you put them side by side you can measure it and uh, mark on the line where you will need to shorten it if it's too long but don't cut it yet you will cut it once the line is through the scooter as you will see in a little bit so with the new brake line on the end there is a small fastener that you can put the string through as you can see here so make sure you Tie the string tightly and maybe put a bit of tape over it as well, just to make sure it doesn't come loose. The easiest way is for you to mount the caliper. You don't need to tighten it down, just put the screws in enough for the caliper to remain on the scooter. And that way you will have an easier time working with the brake line when you are snaking it through the deck of the scooter and then up the stem. Also make sure when you are doing this you don't damage any of the other existing wires that are going through the stem or other parts of the scooter. Okay, and that's it. You now have the new brake line all the way to the top. So now you can remove the string. And you can now remove the old brake lever. You could have done this before as well, but I did it at this stage. The electric wire to the brake lever is still attached. I will do that later on. To put on the nut brakes you also need to remove the grip because they don't have the two-piece attachment as the zoom brakes did. Uh, I also marked the position the grip was in but you don't have to do that step but then you will have to realign the grips at the end. So now just slide the new nut brake lever into place.
so you can measure the line name and make sure you cut it in the right place. For example, for the back line, you may also make sure that it's long enough so you can turn the handlebars. But if you measured it the same as the old existing one, you should have no problem with it. And now you just cut it where you measured it. The piece that you cut off, uh, make sure that when you remove the end, you hold it over some uh, kitchen towels so the bit of oil that is left in that line drains out. And you will need to carefully remove the pin that's uh, still in the end of the line if you had to shorten the break line. So you can put the pin back into the end of the line that you just cut. If you bought uh, some extra pins uh, together with the brake set then you don't need to do this step. So just carefully cut out uh, the brake line so you can remove the small metal piece that's at the end and make sure you don't damage the piece with the knife so you need to cut really carefully around it. The line is made up of outside black part, then there is some uh, insulation in the middle and then there is a clear hose on the inside. So you also need to carefully cut a little bit from that one. And this is the small piece that you are after. So this is how you insert it into the line that you cut. And you will need this small tool that we used before to cut the brake line. And you just line it up in the tool and it will be pushed into the brake line. Make sure you have it lined up correctly and then just slowly twist the lever to insert the pin. Here I needed to reposition the brake line because it slipped a bit too much in the tool so the pin wasn't inserted all the way and once the pin is flush with the brake line you can remove it from the tool and it's ready to be inserted into the brake lever. So now you need to remove the brake lever from the handlebars so you can remove the temporary hose line that is holding the oil in place. Make sure you hold it upright so you don't spill any of the oil because the brake line as well as the brake lever are pre-filled with oil so you don't have to bleed it once it's installed. So carefully remove the old line and take the screw from the line that is holding it in place. And on the new line insert the rubber cover. 
insert the screw and then the small metal piece and now you can insert the line into the brake lever the metal o-ring will fall in place and then you will just tighten the nut in place and it will crush the metal o-ring and secure the brake line in the lever Once you have it tightened, make sure no oil is leaking out and you can now slide it back onto the handlebars. And now secure the brake lever in place so you can test the brakes. Before testing the brakes, you also need to completely secure the caliper and uh, line it up in place so the brake discs are not rubbing. For more detailed guide on this part, you can check out my brake bleeding video where I included a section that guides you in detail over how to align the brake caliper. So once you have everything lined up and the brakes are working and no oil is leaking, you can press the rubber cover into place and then put the grip back on. Okay, the last part is uh, connecting the new wires to the scooter. So for this part, uh, I bought the nut brakes that already have the Juliet connector in place. And I also bought the second Juliet connector to solder onto the scooter wires. And that way I can remove the brakes when I want. Because originally on the VDM-10, the brakes were directly connected to the main controller in the scooter. But uh, I wanted uh, them to be removable so it's easier. If you buy the nut brakes without the Juliet connectors, you can just solder the two wires in place. So you will need to cut the existing wire for the zoom brakes or the mechanical brakes that you had there and solder the new brake wire. This is how I did it. I also have some heat shrink around it so the wires are not touching and they are also weather sealed. Uh, doing it this way you don't need to open up the deck and change the whole electrical wiring for the brakes all the way to the controller. But that is also an option if you want to go that route. You can buy a long wire and then replace the whole brake wire all the way to the controller. But I think this is the easier way to go about it. If your scooter already has the connectors for the brake uh, electric wire then that's even easier because you can just disconnect the old brakes and connect the new ones but on the VDM-10 the brakes did not have the connectors and they were directly wired to the controller so and this is the end result you can see the connectors there is the heat wrap that's covering the solder points and the, the new nut brakes are installed on the scooter if you have any questions about the whole process leave a comment down under the video and if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and uh, make sure you subscribe for more electric scooter content. It will also help out the channel grow and uh, allow me to produce more scooter related videos for you. So thanks for watching and see you next time.